<clears throat> Welcome to the Digging Deeper Best Practices for Broccoli, Brussels Sprouts, Cabbage, and Cauliflower lesson. I'm Jenna Neese, and I'm the Purdue Extension Ag and Natural Resources Educator in Putnam County. I also serve as the Adult Education Coordinator to the Putnam County Soil and Water Conservation District. I am pleased to be offering this session of the Digging Deeper series that's being hosted by the Purdue Extension Ag and Natural Resources Educators in Area 5. On the screen, you'll find a list of all the educators that are part of Area 5. Um, we're all here to answer questions that you may have about gardening, insects, pest problems. Um, so feel free to reach out to any of us, even if you live outside of one of our counties. Now, today we are going to focus on broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and cauliflower. And you may think, well, what do these plants all have in common? Why would you talk about them during the same session? Well, each of these plants belong to the same species, Brassica oleracea. They have been selected for a specific form or feature. Like for example, cauliflower, it's grown for its immature flower head. Collectively, these vegetables are known as cold crops. Cold crops prefer cool temperatures. They need steady growth for good productivity. Cold temperatures after planting, hot weather as the crop matures, and inconsistent soil moisture can slow growth and cause problems. Therefore, there are years when it's really difficult to end up getting a good harvest of these vegetables. These four plants are mostly prone to the same insect and disease problems. So crop rotation is an important management tool that you'll wanna to consider doing. Now that we've talked briefly about the similarities and why we talk, are talking about them during the same presentation, we now wanna shift gears and talk about each one of these plants individually. The first one we're going to talk about is broccoli. There are different types of broccoli. There is the annual green type that we are very familiar with. There is also a purple heading broccoli that is a little bit more rare. Then Romesco broccoli that has a yellowish green chronical um, group of buds arranged in a spiral. Then there is a sprouting broccoli. Now the sprouting broccoli is not um, grown um, very frequent in the United States. Broccoli heads are harvested for consumption and usually have a diameter larger than two and a half inches. The shoots are immature heads that will not become as large as the true head, but they can also be um, harvested too. The head consists of florets, buds, leaves, stalks, and stems. The plant will grow to about three feet tall. Now in the spring, you can um, start broccoli in your garden as transplants. These transplants can be purchased at many big box retail stores, or you can grow them from seed on your own. For seed or for spring planting, start your seeds indoors about five to seven weeks before you wanna put them outside. For optimum gener germination, they need temperatures of about 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The seeds should be planted a quarter to a half an inch deep and typically seedlings will merge in about five days. <clears throat> you can put your transplant outside about four to six weeks before the last average frost date for your location. So you need to be aware of when that occurs. Seedlings should have about four leaves on them. If they're smaller than that, then they may not be able to survive any frost that might occur. Now plants should be spaced 18 to 24 inches apart with rows approximately 36 inches apart. Planting can continue into April and through May in some of the coldest parts of Indiana. Now planting for a fall harvest is done in late spring or late summer. If using transplants, assume harvest will be on the average first frost date, then count back the number of days from transplant to the harvest for your cultivar plus 10 days. You can grow these transplants from seed also, since the soil is already warmed up. If you plant the seeds um, directly into the soil, um, make sure you allow time for the transplants to get to the right age um, to match up with the example we provided earlier on when to put transplants out for a fall harvest. Now broccoli, it needs well-drained, fertile soil, and full sun. You really want to avoid sandy or poorly drained soil if at all possible. 
adequate soil moisture should be about three to four inches down into the soil. Broccoli prefers a soil pH that's six to 6.5, which is slightly acidic. As always, we recommend doing a soil test before you make any large changes or any for large fertilizer application to your garden. However, you want to give um, your plant just a little start with some extra starter fertilizer, that's okay. Um, you can also side dress your broccoli with 0.1 pound of actual nitrogen per 100 square feet about three weeks after you've transplanted because that's when the plant's going to be actively growing. Now remember to read and follow all label instructions on how to apply your fertilizer appropriately. Now there are a number of different varieties of broccoli that you may want to grow. You should select your cultivar um, based on the desired head shape, size, um, color, yield, and disease resistance. Cultivars may also differ in planting and harvest times too. Planting multiple cultivars that mature at different times will help you extend your season and allow for a continual harvest of broccoli. So on the screen, you'll see a few different um, varieties or cultivars listed that you can select from. Now there's a lot more out there than what's shown here, but this just gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the varieties and what their maturity might be. So we're going to talk about some of the um, problems that broccoli deals with that maybe the other four, other three plant species do not deal with. Um, I'm going to wait till the end to talk about the insect or disease pressure that all of these um, plants share. But in terms of just looking at problems that broccoli deals with, one of them is bolting. And the high summertime temperatures may cause bolting in your broccoli. Bolting is when the plant prematurely produces flowers before harvest and can make the broccoli head unusable. If you look here in the picture, you can easily see the yellow flowers popping up through the broccoli head. And when you see that, that's the bolting and that's when the broccoli becomes unusable. You're just gonna have to get rid of the plant and not really be able to harvest um, the produce that you were hoping to get. Then stress plants may result in broccoli developing buttons which are small heads on broccoli plants that are not desirable for harvest. Stresses that may result in button development include cold temperatures below 50 degrees, insect or pathogen um, pressure, nutrient deficiencies. So really to help prevent buttoning from occurring, you need to make sure that you're selecting transplants that are healthy, show no signs of disease, and put them in a favorable environment um, that's not going to have the stressors. And then as it's growing, try to provide it with the right temperatures and moisture that it needs to um, thrive. <clears throat> now broccoli is hand harvested prior to flowering, roughly 60 days from transplanting or about 110 days from when you actually seed it. Harvest the head while the buds are still tight and before any yellow petals begin to show. If harvested too late, the stem will be hard. Cut the central stem five to six inches below the head. Many cultivars will continue to produce side shoots as long as you leave a few leaves on the plant. The amount of stem you to leave on the broccoli head depends on what you're going to use it for. In the case of processed broccoli, we usually leave about or take off six inches of stem. While if you're doing a fresh broccoli that you're going to sell on a harvest mar a farmer's market, you may want the stem to be a little bit longer. Now those side shoots that I said may develop after you harvest the main head. Um, they will slowly develop along the sides. They'll be smaller, um, so you'll have to pay attention to them, but they can be harvested and used um, for produce too. Um, and you can continue to harvest those smaller heads until um, the freezing or weather causes it to stop developing them. Now broccoli, um, it can keep for about 10 to 14 days if you're storing it properly, which means you have the correct temperature and humidity in the location that it's being stored. So now that we've talked about Brussels or broccoli, we're now going to switch gears over to Brussels sprouts. And you may be thinking, well, you're calling it the wrong name. It doesn't need that S in there after Brussels. But it really does because um, Brussels sprouts is named after the city of Brussels, Belgium, where the vegetable first became popular. Brussels sprouts are a cool season vegetable that can be grown both in the fall and early spring. They also take a long time to mature, which can make them a little bit challenging for the home gardener. 
For ease of growth, select and use transplants that are young and vigorous. So once again, if you're going to go out and buy those transplants from a big box retail store or a garden center, look at them. Be very careful to make sure that you're buying something that's healthy and got the right maturity at that point in its growth stage. It, Brussels sprouts is a hardy biennial that is actually harvested at the end of the first season for its enlarged buds at the base of the leaves that are called sprouts. And you can see them in the photo shown here. Now you want to plant your seeds about a quarter to a half an inch deep. Germination is best once again when temperatures are between 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and seedlings should appear in about five days. You want to grow your seedlings in a little bit cooler temperature, so about 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and they should be ready to transplant in about four to five weeks. You may also want to purchase or could purchase transplants from a store if you'd like. Now spring plantings are not necessarily successful in Indiana because um, the fact that if we plant them in the spring, the temperatures are constantly increasing. Whereas if we wait and do for a fall harvest of Brussels sprouts, the temperatures are declining and that helps with the growth of the plants. So this vegetable really does need a long growing season in cool weather for those buds to mature. So if you try to do a spring planting, um, you really need to get those transplants out early in March or early April. Summer plantings that are made for a fall harvest are much more common in Indiana because our temperatures are decreasing as summer fades into fall. So have plants in the ground in early July for northern Indiana and then about mid-August for southern Indiana. You should plant Brussels sprouts 15 to 18 inches apart with about 30 inches between your rows, if at all possible. <clears throat> Now, Brussels sprouts require a minimum of six hours of sunlight a day. They prefer fertile, well-drained, organic soil, but will tolerate a wide range of soils. Brussels sprouts grow best in soil that is 6.2 to 6.8 pH, soil pH. If planting in the spring when the soil is still cold, then you're probably going to want to give it some starter fertilizer to help it um, get to growing. And then you need to make sure that your plant receives about one to one and a half inches of water a week. Um, you really want to irrigate Brussels sprouts frequently enough to keep the soil lightly moist, particularly when the weather's really warm and the plant's trying to develop. You can also mulch around your plant with straw or wood chips to help conserve soil moisture and also reduce weed competition. Now, about three weeks after you've transplanted your Brussels sprouts into the ground, you may wanna consider side dressing them with some fertilizer. Once again, you'd want to use about 0.1 pound of actual nitrogen per 100 square feet when you go to side dress your Brussels sprouts. Like many plants, there are several different varieties to choose from. Varieties such as Jade Cross E, Long Island Improved, Prince Marvel, and Valent have a 90 day maturity rate. Jade Cross E has large sprouts and is easy to harvest. Long Island Improved is open pollinated and is considered an old time variety of Brussels sprouts. Royal Marvel has an 85 day to ma maturity rate, is very productive and has tight sprouts. So we really just wanna give you some ideas of a few different varieties or cultivars that you can select from. Um, and make sure that you're reading the label to see which one best fits your needs and will harvest when you want it to. So let's talk about some of the problems that you might have with Brussels sprouts. The big one deals with temperature. Um, if temperature gets too warm, Brussels sprouts become bitter. In contrast, the frost helps improve the flavor, makes them more firm and less bitter. They will honestly withstand a frost and harvest continues until it freezes. So on, it is a really good idea to put them in the ground in that um, late summertime and let them mature as temperatures are decreasing because that frost in the fall is going to help them taste better, be firmer and more ideal of what you really want them to be like. Whereas if you have them as a spring planted crop, they're going to be, growing and being ready to be harvested when our temperatures are really warm because we're in the summer. And that's gonna cause those Brussels sprouts to have more of a bitter taste.
Now the first sprouts will be ready to harvest in about 85 to 90 days from transplanting, depending on the variety. The lowest bud matures first with a new bud firming as the plant continues to grow upward. Now you wanna pick the buds or sprouts when they're about one to two inches in size. As you harvest each of the sprouts, remove the leaf below it if possible. Um, however, you might wanna leave a few of them on there. When you go to actually harvest the sprouts, reach in and lightly twist it as you pull it off. That will help it um, remove easily and prevent it from like sp splitting or breaking and make it so that you can use it for what you want to do. Um, now you can store Brussels sprouts in the refrigerator um, until you're ready to use them, or they can also be frozen and used at a later date. <clears throat> now we're on to talking about our third plant for today, and that one is cabbage. Um, cabbage has been cultivated for more than 4,000 years. It is a popular in many dishes around the world. It is high in dietary fiber, iron, vitamin C, vitamin K, folate, manganese, and other important nutrients. Cabbage is a hardy biennial harvested in the first season for its terminal cluster of leaves that we refer to as a head. Now seeds um, are usually started indoors for a spring harvested plant. Seeds germinate in about four to five days when the temperatures are about 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit indoors. In spring, you can plant the transplants outside about two to six weeks before the average last frost date and continue until the very early April in Southern Indiana and into May in the coldest part of the state. If growing from seed, start the seeds about five to six weeks before you plan on putting them outside. Now with transplants, you need to make sure they're stocky and they have about four to six true leaves on them. Now you may wonder, well, what's a true leaf? And when a seedling first emerges from the, from the soil, the first leaves that come out are usually their cotyledon leaves. And then the next set of leaves are true leaves. A good example of this is if you think about a tomato plant. If you've got some tomato seedlings, you'll notice the first leaves don't really look like those tomato leaves that we're all familiar with. So those do not count on how many leaves you have on the seedling before you should put it outside. With cabbage, we, again, we want four to six true leaves um, and you want it to be about the, the stem to be about the size of a pencil. If your transplant has less than four to six true leaves, then it may be more sensitive to the cold um, temperatures. And then if they have more than six leaves, then it may be too mature and produce an inferior crop um, and begin to flower prematurely. Now plants should be planted about 12 to 14 inches apart with rows about 18 inches apart. For a fall harvest, plant transplants seven to nine weeks before the average first frost date. This would be about mid-July in Northern Indiana and late August in Southern Indiana. Cabbage is quite cold tolerant, so you may be able to harvest after those dates though. You can start these plants by putting the seed directly in the ground since it's already warm, the soil's warmed up, and the seeds should be put in about a quarter to a half an inch deep. Or you could buy transplants and put them outside too if you don't want to directly seed the cabbage into the soil. Cabbage grows well in fertile, well-drained, moist soil with plenty of organic matter. <coughs> soil pH should be maintained around 6 to 6.8 for optimum growth. This range of soil pH will maximize nutrient availability and discourage club, club root, which we'll talk about later. Mulching around the plants will help keep the ground cool and moist. Cabbage has a shallow root system so tilling near plants may cause harm. Provide consistent and adequate water when needed. So it needs about one inch of water per week. <coughs> now when planting in the spring and the soil is still cold, you might wanna provide it with some so um, starter fertilizer. If you don't, or if you wanna also provide some type of side dress, you can do that about three weeks after you put the transplants outside. And to side dress, you'd only use about 0.1 pound of actual nitrogen per 100 square feet. 
Now with cabbage, you really want to select cultivars based on the desired head size and color, resistance to splitting, time to, and time to maturity. Early maturing varieties may not stir, store as well and are more prone to splitting, while longer season varieties store more easily and are more commonly used for sauerkraut, if that's what your ultimate goal is. Now of the varieties listed on here, Regal Red is a red variety of cabbage along with Red Acre and Ruby Perfection. Now there are two problems that um, we really want to talk about or be aware with um, when it comes to um, cabbage. And one of them we've already talked about, that's bolting, but there's also splitting and root damage. So once again with bolting, that's when the plant develops some sort of flowering. And oftentimes seedlings exposed to low temperatures, so in the 40 to 50 degree Fahrenheit range for more than two weeks may develop flowers and begin to bolt. So it's best to wait until the soil has warmed to 40 degrees Fahrenheit before transplanting to help prevent this from occurring. Now cabbage does need a constant steady growth for best help head development. Water if rainfall is lacking to help the head develop correctly. When the head grows too rapidly, it may split. This can occur when you have a dry spell that's then followed by a lot of rain or when the weather is so warm that it stimulates rapid growth. To slow down the growth and prevent splitting, you can grab the um, developing head and give it a light twist to sever some of the roots. Because um, once again, like I said, they have a very shallow root system, so it's easy to kind of break a few of them. If you don't want to um, grab the head and twist it, you can also take a little spade and kind of cut some of those roots off. And that will slow down the, gro the growth and prevent the head from splitting. Now, because the roots um, are shallow, it works to your advantage when you're trying to prevent splitting from occurring, but it could be a disadvantage. If you've got some weed pressure and you're going to be tilling around the, the cabbage or using a hoe or a spade to get rid of those, you need to be really careful because when you do some weed removal, you can easily damage the roots and possibly kill the plant. So be careful with um, weed control, maybe consider doing some hand pulling if at all possible or mulching around the cabbage plant so that you can prevent root damage associated with weed control. Now you want to um, harvest cabbage when the head is solid. You harvest by cutting the stem immediately under the head, leaving the loose outer leaves. Smaller heads that are about two to four inches may grow at the base of those leaves on that cut stump, allowing for a second smaller harvest to form and develop for you to enjoy. Cabbage can be stored in a refrigerator for several weeks or up to five months if the temperatures are correct and it's got the right environment which means you need a lot of humidity for storage of cabbage. <clears throat> the final plant we wanna talk about is cauliflower and it is a hardy biennial. The name cauliflower comes from the Latin collis and floris, which translate into cabbage flower. Nutritious and colorful, cauliflower can be found in vegetable and ornamental gardens. The head called the curd is made of dormant flower buds the curd is usually white. Hybrids between broccoli and cauliflower are available with purple and green heads. Purple cauliflower tastes like broccoli if it's harvested before frost, but if you harvest it after frost, it tastes like cauliflower. So that's kind of a unique um, talking point about cauliflower to think about how the hybrid changes or tastes different depending on when you harvest it. <clears throat> Now for spring plantings, you really wanna put your transplants in the ground two to three weeks before the average last frost date, after the soil has warmed to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not plant so late that the curd matures in the heat of the summer. If growing from seed, you'll wanna start the seeds five to seven weeks earlier. Now transplants should be smaller than four inches in height and have at least three to four pairs of true leaves on them. If they are smaller, then they may be sensitive to frost and end up dying. So if 
you think there's not, they're, going, they're too small and might succumb to frost damage, try to cover them up in the evenings to prevent the frost from hurting them. Now you need to space your plants 18 to 24 inches apart with rows a minimum of 24 inches apart. For har fall harvest, plant transplant seven to nine weeks before the average first frost day. Put the transplants further apart than previously mentioned. You can sow the seed directly into the soil since it is warmer um, if you would like. And at that point, you need to make sure that you allow about five to six days for the seeds to germinate. Now cauliflower grows well in fertile, well-drained, moist soil with plenty of organic matter. It prefers a soil pH between six and 6.8. When planting in the spring when the soil is still cold, utilize a starter fertilizer, if at all possible, to help the plant get established. You can once again side dress it with uh, 0.1 actual pounds of nitrogen per 100 square feet about three weeks after transplanting. Um, and that's when you're really going to see that rapid growth stage occur. Now this is another one of the plants that you might want to consider mulching around so that you could help keep the ground cool and moist. Also, it's like cauliflower um, or it's like cabbage in the sense that it has a shallow root system. So having that mulch around it will help control with weeds and help prevent you from damaging the root system. <clears throat> you should select the variety of cauliflower you want to grow based on the curd size, color, if it's self blanching, and it's time to maturity. Now of the ones shown here on the screen, I will mention that um, cheddar is an orange variety of cauliflower and queen violet is a purple variety of cauliflower. Now cauliflower is considered to be more difficult to grow than other cold crops. It is not as tolerant to heat, cold, or drought. Any factor that interrupts its growth can cause problems. If growth is interrupted, Erupted, the plant may button. Button again is a small, hard, inedible head. This can be caused by using overly large transplants, <coughs> crowding transplants in small containers, cold temperatures lasting several days, a dry spell, or a lack of nitrogen. Fall crops are usually more reliable because the chance of cold temperatures soon after planting and chances of hot weather is lower. Now, if temperatures are above 80 degrees Fahrenheit during curd development, leaves may begin to form in the head and the head may become rough in texture, have a purple or green color to it, or simply not form at all. And those discolorations or those leaves really makes that curd undesirable and unusable. So you, once again, you really want to make sure that that curd's forming when the temperatures are still cool enough. Now, blanching is another um, thing that you have to consider with cauliflower. Once the curd is about two to three inches in diameter, you're going to want to take those leaves that are at the bottom of it and pull it up around it and tie it together. And you can see that in that picture. That act of tying it together and covering that curd so light doesn't penetrate it is called blanching. And you need to do that in order to keep that curd from changing colors because you really want it to be as white as possible. So the tighter you get that, those leaves around, the less light that penetrates, the better. Um, now there are some varieties of cauliflower that are considered self-blanching, so their leaves will actually do that, but the only problem is sometimes that self-blanching variety may not close tight enough around the curd and sunlight can still penetrate it. So even if you get a self-blanching variety, use some caution, evaluate it, see if it's really covering the curd or not. If it is not, provide some assistance by tying those leaves around the curd and making sure no sunlight penetrates it. Now you want to see, keep the leaves tied around there um, until the curd reaches about six to eight inches in diameter, which can take three to four days in warm weather. <clears throat> now harvest cauliflower after the curd has turned white and reached mature size. Harvest cauliflower by cutting below the head with a sharp knife. Include a few leaves with the head since they will help hold it together. Now, unlike broccoli and cabbage, 
you won't get smaller um, shoots or smaller curds develop after you harvest the head. You're only going to get that one head. So it's okay once you've harvested it to get rid of the plant. Um, cauliflower can be stored in the refrigerator for up to two weeks if it's provided the right environment. Now we talked a minute ago about self blanching <coughs> cauliflower and the picture here on the screen shows you a self um, blanching um, variety and you can see the leaves are trying to wrap around that curd. They're just not getting there all the way. So you would want to provide it some assistance. So now that we have talked about each one of these crops individually, how to get them started, when's the best time to grow them, and um, talked about harvesting varieties and even a few of the basic problems, I do want to talk about some of the common problems that they all face. And insects and pests are a problem that they do deal with and you have to become um, familiar with them. And so we've got a few of the main ones on the screen. Aphids, they feed on the plant's fluid and can vector viruses. Severe aphid infestations will wilt and exhibit stunted growth if the plant survives. You want to control by encouraging the presence of natural predators and using insecticides that do not harm natural predators populations. Overfertilization of some plants can increase the severity of an aphid infestation. <clears throat> Now there are several different caterpillars that can impact um, these four plants and caterpillars cause more injury on young plants and but they can also be found on older ones that are getting ready to be harvested. A lot of times we don't realize we have a caterpillar problem until we see those big chunks um, bit out of the leaves like shown on some of these pictures here. You really want to control all caterpillars in about the same manner. Essentially find the caterpillar, remove it, um, crush it, or if you don't want to crush it, put it in a bucket of warm soapy water and it'll end up dying. Um, you can use insecticides to control them, but you really got to make sure that the caterpillar is young if you're going to do that. And of course, with any insecticide, read and follow all label instructions. Now, if the caterpillar is too mature, so if it's longer than a half an inch, then it's going to be difficult to control with an insecticide. So that physical removal is a really good idea. Here we also have the feed um, a flea beetle and it will eat foliage and you can see it's much smaller holes than what we saw with caterpillars. There's a lot of or several different organic options or traditional insecticides that can be used. Once again, regardless of what type of insect you're dealing with, begin by getting it identified what's causing the problem. Extension educators are there to help and help you identify them. But if you would decide to use an insecticide, um, make sure that you're trying to use it when you're not going to hurt beneficial insects and that you read and follow all label instructions on how to use it because the label of the insecticide is considered the law. So we now want to shift gears and talk more about diseases. And there are a number of different diseases and bacterial issues that these plants can face. A few of the common ones are shown here on the screen. Black plague starts out as inconspicuous small circular dark legions on infected plants. The spots gradually enlarge, becoming well-defined with a gray center filled with numerous black pimple-like spore-bearing structures. It eventually destroys the fibrous root system and results in death of the plant. Black rot is a bacterial disease. The cotyledons of infected plants become water-soaked and then shrivel and drop off. On true leaves, the infection generally appears as a yellow V-shaped area along the leaf margin. And then club root is a fungal disease. Infected plants wilt in the middle of hot sunny days and leaves turn pale green to yellow. Eventually, infected plants wilt permanently and die. Roots will be enlarge and have spindle-shaped um, galls or clubs on them, like shown here in the picture, once you pull up the plant. <clears throat> Now to reduce the impact that diseases may have on your plants, begin by selecting um, transplants that are um, healthy, that show no signs of disease. Um, you know, make sure you're being selective on what you purchase or what you grow. And then, um, you know, practice crop rotation. Some of these diseases can overwinter. So it's really a good idea about every two to three years 
to keep rotation of your plants so they're not in the same spot for several years in a row. Um, if you would decide to do any um, fungal applications to control these problems, uh, make sure you're following all label instructions on how to do this. And then when it comes to watering, water at the base of the plants, avoid getting water on the leaves if at all possible. If you do water and the water gets on the leaves, make sure you're watering earlier in the day so that the leaves have time to dry before temperatures get colder. So just some basic um, plant care can really go a long ways in making sure that your broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage and cauliflower production is successful each year. Now, as I said at the beginning of this program, that us Extension educators are very um, happy to be offering this educational series to everyone. Um, and we really are here to help you along the way as you grow your different um, items in your garden this year and even into the future. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We can help identify problems that you may be having and give you suggestions on how to treat those problems. If we do not know ourselves what the problem is, we can reach out to our fellow educators across Indiana to um, find out the solution. And if we still can't figure it out, we can always submit a sample to the Purdue Pest and Plant Diagnostic Laboratory. There is usually a fee with um, submitting a sample to that, but it's very nominal in the long run. So once again, if you have any questions or concerns in this upcoming year about growing your different plants in your gardens, feel free to reach out to all of the fellow educators that you see on the screen. Or if you're not in one of our counties, feel free to reach out to your local one or one of us. We hope you have enjoyed today's program. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you.